QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Reports Month Number One. Get ready and some coffee because the accounting team is on hand with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening up the major financial statement reports as done every time. Reports on the left in the favorites. Right click in the balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Right click in the P and the L, the profit and loss open in a new tab. Same with the trustee T to the B trial balance. Tap into the right, closing the hamburger. Let's change the range. We're going from 01024 to 022924. Drop down so we can see it month by month. Run it. Tab into the right. Hamburger needs to be closed. And then we'll change the range. 01024 tab, 022924 tab. Selecting the drop down. We're going to see it side by side, month by month. Run the report to refresh it. Tab into the right. Closing the hamburger. Scrolling up in those ranges. They are a change in going from 01024 tab, 022924 tab. Dropping it down month by month, side by side. Let's refresh that report. Back to the balance sheet. We've been taking a look at the bank reconciliation for the first month. We have in our statement the 88-645-27. We have on the bank statement as of the cutoff point, 131, January 31st, 61-241-85. We've basically finished the process of reconciling and now we'll create the bank reconciliation report which will give us the difference between this number and what's on the bank statement, which should be the outstanding items, outstanding checks and deposits. Let's go to the first tab and resume the bank reconciliation in the transactions. We're in the reconcile. We will resume the reconciling, closing up the hamburger. And you will recall last time that we had the info up top. If we look at the info we put in the beginning balance was zero. That was a problem, but we fixed it. We got the 61,000. That's the ending balance that we just typed in there from the bank statement. And here's the date on 131.24, closing this back out. We then have the, the reconciling worksheet, which is comparing the statement balance and the cleared balance, remembering that this cleared balance is not the same thing as the ending balance on the balance sheet, which we can see is over here at as of January 31st, 88, 645, 27. So what then is this cleared balance that needs to match the statement balance? That's all the stuff that we checked off. All the stuff that we checked off has cleared. That's all the stuff that was on the bank statement that we then checked off over here on our books side of things. These two things have to match out so you get a green check mark saying it's okay to then reconcile. This, of course, cleared balance is the beginning balance minus the payments plus uh, the deposits. And in our first bank rec within these deposits, we had the beginning balance in here because that was the first bank rec. That was one of the issues we talked about last time. Now, the, the, the unchecked off items are not necessarily a problem. Those are the reconciling items. That's the exact difference between the book balance and the bank balance. So you can kind of see how that works. Now, if you, if you have this at zero, then when you hit the finish now, you, it'll give you the finish now. Otherwise, the default here will be, as we saw before, if I uncheck one of these and this isn't zero, it says save later. Difference. It says here, problem, right? Your selected transactions, uh, it won't let me read it, but it's an issue. If I go back on it, then the default is you're good to go. You did it. Difference is zero. So if I, if I hit the drop down up top, we have finish now, save for later, close without saving. Now note that just want to point out if it wasn't reconciled, even down to the penny, you could have an option here that you could say that you still want to close it, finish now. If you do that and you force QuickBooks to do that, what it's going to do is create a journal entry, in this case for the $5,000, which it's not a big problem in terms of the journal entry. Usually if it was 5,000, it would be a big problem. But if it was only like a dollar or something, wouldn't have a huge problem in terms of the cash, but the level of assurance that you have with the bank reconciliation goes way down 
if it's not exactly at zero because what if it's a two dollar difference that two dollars could have been a result of multiple deposits and multiple checks so even though the balance will be pretty close then by forcing it to reconcile the other side of the transactions which could be creating the entire income statement are going to have an issue right they could be off still okay so let's go ahead and finish the reconciliation your reconciliation this account uh, to see the report of this reconciliation uh, the view reconciled report so otherwise you're done so we typically would like to view the reconciled report and so let's go into that we finished the reconciliation process we've leveled up there so that's good okay so here is the report so this this is at the checking account uh, 13124 and we can see down below that we have the summary the summary will typically match what is on the bank statement meaning beginning balance plus addition additions and minus the subtractions is the ending balance but here uh it's a little different because the beginning balance was an issue the checks are going to line up exactly right so here's the 111829 and then the deposits are going to be the 30,000 beginning balance plus the deposits that we had over here for the first bank wreck and then it gets to the 61 241.85 the 61 241.85 so note this is a nice little little summary to let us see what actually happened in the clear balances but it's not actually the bank reconciliation this is just giving us the statement balance starting from the statement balance that's when you get to the actual reconciliation because you're trying to find the difference between the statement balance and the register uh and the register balance as of the cutoff which is going to be the the 13124 so here we have the the uncleared transactions so here and so the uncleared transactions is the difference so really the reconciliation let's pull out the trustee calculator if we were to give this to like an auditor that wanted to 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 look at our books they would they would want to know the the difference between the books and the register which of course is this 88645.27 minus the uh 61241.85 that's going to be a difference to the 27403 and on our books we can see over here on the balance sheet as of january 8864527 however of course this summary isn't going to be enough because the fact that it just gives us the difference here isn't going to give us exactly what the difference is isn't really helpful or useful either because obviously all the transactions after January 31st will not have cleared because we haven't done the bank reconciliation for that period yet so really what we're looking at are these three numbers in summary the statement balance the uncleared items and the register and then we want the detail on down below so let's look at the detail checks and payments that are cleared these checks and payments that have cleared should tie out basically to what is on the bank statement so although that's kind of interesting to have in one place it's not really giving us any more information because it's just basically giving us the same information we have on the bank statement all the stuff that we checked off that cleared deposits and other other cleared so once again these are the cleared items which are on the bank statement what we're really looking for are the things that have not cleared yet which are here so here's the unclear checks and payments as of 13124 so if we were an auditor these are the items that we would be concerned with this is making up the difference between what's on the book and what's in the bank so what we would want to do here is just double check these amounts so we would basically say okay are these legitimate amounts how can we tell if they're legitimate amounts we can look at the bank account after the cutoff date after january 31st to see if they cleared say in february for example if they cleared in february then i have some confidence that these are legitimate tra transactions that were entered in january cleared in february and are, are legitimate outstanding type transactions that's important not just to note that these transactions are legit that's not really the point of the bank reconciliation because remember the point of the bank reconciliation is to verify all transactions that are flowing through the cash account because because that allows us to give us verification on all the other side of the transaction which is the construction of the income statement in essence 
So, so if I know that this is the exact difference, I feel good about that. And if I know that these are all legitimate transactions, there's no plugs in here, just put in the difference, then that's going to be giving me more assurance on our internal controls, not just over cash, but the entire accounting system. This is the uncleared deposits and other credits. So this is the deposit side that has been uncleared. If we look at the, these two netting them out, the 34072.5 minus the 6669.08, that's going to give us the 27403, which we saw in summary way up top here. There's the 20, uh, the 27403.42. So the bank reconciliation report is a kind of a, like gives you more information than you really need on the bank reconciliation. It gives you all this detail. What you're really looking at is this reconciliation, these three numbers, and then the detail of this 27,000, which is broken out not by the checks. These are the cleared items, not by the cleared deposits, but the uncleared checks and the uncleared deposits, which you can then verify. And then it gives you the uncleared checks and payments after 13124, which is really not something that you typically need because obviously everything after that date hasn't yet cleared. So that's just basically telling you what has happened after that point in time, which is kind of seems somewhat irrelevant to me. But then we have the uncleared deposits and other th stuff after uh, on the deposit side of things. So there's th the report. Now, I realize that this report is a little bit different than other uh, than, than other types of reports because this report is not being constructed as we create the financial statements. In other words, when we actually build the financial statements over here, when we enter the transactions with our forms, then that constructs our financials balance sheet income statement as well as the subsidiary reports, for example, breaking out the accounts receivable by customer uh, and, and all, the, all the supporting reports. When we look at the bank reconciliation, what is happening is we're comparing our books to the same information on the bank side of things, and it's an internal control uh, type of report. So, so therefore, when you open it up, you got to be a little bit careful of it from that perspective, and you also have to note that if you change something, then it's going it could mess up your bank reconciliation right so in other words if i changed something and if i deleted a check or something like that then my balance sheet would be adjusted the double entry accounting system would adjust for that but if i delete a check that had already cleared the bank account then my reconciliation will no longer work if if the reconciliation reports update automatically then I will be out of balance, right? Because now I've now I've deleted something that was in the reconciliation, helping me to tie out from what's on our books to what's on uh, the bank books. Therefore, with the bank reconciliations, you oftentimes want to actually print them out when you when you create them, so that so that you know you could see the bank reconciliation when it was actually reconciled, and if there were any changes that happened at a later point in time that mess up the report. You can you can see the report before it got messed up, right? And then you can go into the prior period or into the current reconciliation and try to see what happened, what got deleted or anything like that. So if I go in, for example, and find the reconciliations, then they might be located a little bit differently. If I go into the reports here and close this up and I go into bank reconciliation, I think they just call it reconciliation reports. So if I go into reconciliation reports, notice what it did there. It took me out of where I was at in the reports. It jumped me over to the transactions and it put me into the reconcile tab. So that's when you're looking at bank reconciliations, in essence, they're not in the same location as the normal reports because they're internal control reports. You can find them in the normal reports, but then it kind of jumps you back over here into the transactions tab and into uh, the reconcile. Now, if I go back to the chart of accounts and then back to the reconcile, you'll see that you have this kind of cookie trail up top. And then we have the ability down here to then do the next bank reconciliation, which we'll do in a future uh, presentation to see two months of bank reconciliations. And then on the right, we have our summary and history by account. So if I take a look at the summary here, then we got the re reconciliation summary 
and here's uh, my checking account, and here's the statement ending date 131.24, reconciled on uh, 2124. If I go back onto my reconciliation tab, hold on, let's go back this way, and then go back into reconcile. If I go into my history by account, then it gives me the statement ending date and my reconcile on accounts here as well. So I can then view the report. So let's go in and view the report. Here is our actual report. And so then I would actually possibly print the report because of the issues that you can have with the bank reconciliations. So you might actually want to print it. I'm going to print it as a cute PDF printer and say print. And let's save that. I'm going to save it into my bank recs here. So then if there's any issue, if there's any problems with it, I can go back in here and see it as a hard copy. Now you also have the capacity to actually upload it back. So if I went, if I went into here and I went into my summary and we're going to say there's going to be my, my uh, checking. So if I go into that, hold on a sec, let's go back here again, reconcile, and then let's go into the history. And then here you can see there's actually an attachment. So I might actually want to attach the report to have a hard copy within the same report in the event that if I delete something, the question is, will QuickBooks actually adjust the bank reconciliation, which could throw off the bank rec? So I still like having a hard copy of the bank rec is the thing. So you could then attach and then uh, upload the reconciliation here. So I'm gonna say upload. And then here it is, here's our, here's our bank rec. And then we might even upload the bank statement uh, as well. So we can have everything there in one place, possibly where the report is. So that would be pretty nice. So now we've got our attachments here. We can view the report this way. And then if, if, if someone needed it for external purposes, we can say, yeah, here's the actual printout of the bank reconciliation at the point in time it was done in case anything gets messed up with it and we have the bank statement uh, in the same location. So I think that's a pretty neat capacity there. So that's where the report would be located. Okay, so in a following presentation, our, we're gonna continue the process and do the second month of bank reconciliations. That should be easier uh, given the fact that we don't have that opening balance problem. However, uh, it's useful to look at because these outstanding items, the outstanding items down here, the unclear transactions, we would expect basically those to clear in the following uh, month. So now we have a cleared balance, which is different than what's on the bank balance the cl and the cleared balance. And then these are the uncleared items that were written in our system in January, which we would expect to clear uh, in February. So that's, we'll be able to see the timing differences between the time that they were written and the time that they clear to get a better grasp of the bank reconciliation, how it works and why it is important.